Hi, I'm Jenna. Before I continue, please like and subscribe for more real-life stories like mine. Today, I'm sharing a part of my life that turned everything upside down. Living as a graphic designer and being a full-time mom to my adorable daughter, Lily, isn't easy, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. Mark, my husband, seemed supportive at first glance. He always had that charm that could ease any room. But life at home? Well, that's a different story. So, Jenna, did you move that money to the joint account yet? Mark's voice cuts through the evening calm as I'm tucking Lily into bed. I nod, feeling the tension rise. Yeah, I did that this morning. It's for Lily's college fund, remember? He smiles, but there's a sharpness in his eyes that makes me uneasy. Great, just checking. You know, my mom mentioned she might need some help with her bills again. I pause, feeling my stomach knot. But that money's for Lily. We agreed. His tone changes, a hard edge creeping in. My mom is family too, Jenna. We need to look out for her. As I kiss Lily goodnight, I whisper a promise. It's all for you, sweetheart. The next day at lunch, I meet with Melanie, my lifeline in times of confusion. We grab a corner booth at our usual spot, a little bistro that's seen more than its share of our personal dramas. He did what now? Jenna, you can't let him push you around with the finances, especially not with Lily's future on the line. I know, Mel. It's just... His mother always comes first. It's like we're second to her. Always. I sigh. The weight of years in that single breath. Melanie leans in, her voice firm. Look, you have rights here. If he's threatening you or manipulating you about the money, that's not just wrong. It could be illegal. You need to protect yourself and Lily. I nod, soaking in her words. But how do I even begin dealing with this? I feel so trapped. Start by documenting everything. Any threats or conversations about this. It's all important. And Jenna, remember, I'm here. We can go through this together. Feeling a mix of dread and determination, I head home. That evening, as Mark watches TV, I quietly log into our bank account. My heart sinks. $40,000 from Lily's college fund, gone. I confront him, the screen of my laptop casting cold light in the dim room. Why, Mark? Where is the money? He doesn't even flinch, his eyes still on the screen. I had to help Mom. She's struggling. You wouldn't understand family loyalty. But what about Lily, your daughter? Does she not count as family to you? He finally looks at me, his gaze icy. I'm taking care of my family, Jenna. Don't make me out to be the villain here. As I go to bed, the reality sets in. This isn't just about money. It's about respect, about the future, about my daughter's right to a chance at a better life. And as I drift off, I make another promise. This one fiercer than the last. I'm going to fight for it. Melanie, I found the withdrawals. Big amounts, all transferred to the same account over the last few months. My voice shakes as I show her the bank statement spread across her dining room table. All right, Jenna, let's trace these back. I can request more detailed records. If he's funneling money to his mother without your consent, especially money earmarked for Lily's education, that's financial infidelity. You're joint on this account, right? Yes, and I never agreed to any of this. It was supposed to be for Lily's college. My frustration is palpable, feeling betrayed on so many levels. You're in a good position to contest any decisions he's made that you didn't authorize. We'll need every piece of evidence you can gather. Melanie's tone is all business, a stark contrast to the emotional whirlwind I'm feeling. Back home, I dig deeper, searching through emails and messages. My heart pounds as I find a series of texts between Mark and his mother. Don't worry, Mom. I'll make sure you're taken care of. One reads. Another. Jenna won't even notice until it's too late. My hands tremble with anger and disbelief. Later, as Mark comes home, I'm waiting for him, armed with the prints of the texts and bank statements. He pauses at the door, seeing the papers in my hand, his face a mask of faux confusion. What's this, Jenna? Another one of your little projects? These are bank statements, Mark, and your texts to your mother. Care to explain why you're stealing from Lily's future? My voice is steady now, fueled by righteous anger. It's not stealing. I'm taking care of my family. You're blowing this out of proportion. Our daughter's education fund isn't your personal ATM for family bailouts, Mark. How could you do this? The words pour out, each one laced with a mix of pain and fury. Look, Jenna, you're making a mountain out of a molehill. We can always save up more money. My mom needed it now. His dismissive tone only fuels my resolve. 
And what about Lily? Does she just have to understand that Grandma needed her future more than she did? I shoot back, not backing down. You know what? Maybe it's better if we just end this. I'll file for divorce. Let's see how you and Lily manage without me. His words are cold, calculated. The threat of divorce hangs in the air, a toxic promise of further battles to come. But instead of crumbling, something inside me hardens. If you think divorce will make me back down, think again. I'm fighting for Lily's future, with or without you. Next morning. You need to brace yourself, Jenna. Divorce proceedings can get messy, especially with finances this tangled. Melanie flips through the dossier of bank statements and emails we've compiled. Can we actually prove that Mark misused the funds? My voice is laced with concern. With this evidence, yes. And I think we should bring in a forensic accountant. They'll trace the money trail directly to his mother's accounts, which will strengthen your case. Melanie's assurance is comforting amidst the chaos. Let's do it. I want everything out in the open. He can't just squander Lily's future and walk away. The determination in my voice surprises even me. Over the next few days, we work tirelessly. Melanie coordinates with the forensic accountant while I gather more documentation, receipts, bank notifications, and text messages. Each piece slots into the larger puzzle of Mark's deceit. We've scheduled a deposition for next Thursday. Mark will have to explain these transfers under oath. Melanie updates me over coffee, her eyes scanning the room cautiously. The day of the deposition, the air is thick with tension. Mark sits across the table, his lawyer by his side, looking smug. How do you explain these multiple large withdrawals from the joint savings account? Melanie begins, her tone even but firm. They were necessary financial decisions. My mother needed immediate help. Mark's response is rehearsed, his gaze steady. And you decided this without consulting your wife, Jenna? The opposing lawyer interjects trying to portray the transactions as normal family support. I made the best decision for my family at the time. Mark doesn't waver, but his lawyer shifts uncomfortably. And at what point did you consider Lily's education part of this family? The funds were earmarked for her future, not for unplanned bailouts. Melanie counters, pushing the point home. Mark falters for a moment, his facade cracking. I... I intended to replenish the funds. But you didn't, did you? The money went to your personal account first, and then to your mother's. Never once did it come back to the savings account. Melanie's voice is like a whip, each fact a lash. The room feels colder, the weight of her words settling over the proceedings like a shroud. Mark's lawyer calls for a recess, sensing the shift in momentum. Outside the courtroom, I'm approached by several women from a local support group for divorcees. We heard about your case, Jenna. You're not alone in this. Their stories of financial betrayal and legal battles echo mine, each one a reminder of the pervasive issues lying just beneath the surface of so many marriages. Thank you. I can't tell you how much this support means to me right now. Gratitude washes over me, their presence bolstering my resolve. As the legal battle intensifies over the following weeks, each hearing, each testimony, weaves a tighter net around Mark's narrative. Melanie's strategy is clear. Expose the truth. Secure Lily's future. Sitting beside Melanie in court, watching Mark struggle under the weight of his own deceit, a profound sense of empowerment fills me. Let's focus on the timeline of these transactions. The funds were withdrawn under dubious circumstances, with no prior consent from my client, Jenna. Isn't that correct, Mark? Melanie's voice is precise, each word sharpening the stakes as we stand in the courtroom. Those decisions. I made them for the family's benefit at that time. Mark's reply is hesitant his confidence waning under the scrutiny. But you didn't discuss these family benefits with Jenna, did you? Your wife, your daughter's mother, whose name is on that account just as much as yours? Melanie presses, turning pages of the financial records displayed for the court. I... I thought it was best at the moment. Mark's defense is crumbling, the facts laid out too clearly against him. And yet none of these funds have returned to the account, nor was there any attempt to discuss future repayments. Does that sound like family benefit to you? Melanie doesn't let up, her gaze fixed on the judge, who nods slightly, taking notes. Jenna, wouldn't you agree that these actions have put a significant strain on your family, particularly concerning your daughter's future? The judge turns to me, giving me the floor. Absolutely, Your Honor. Every penny in that account was meant for Lily. We wanted to give her the best start possible in her adult life. 
and that money was a big part of our plan. My voice is steady, stronger than I've ever felt. Your Honor, I want to add that I have always provided for my family. I was under a lot of pressure to help my mother, who was facing hard times. Mark tries to regain some ground, looking directly at the judge. And yet, diverting funds from your daughter's education fund without discussing it with your wife doesn't seem like a responsible way to handle family pressures, does it, Mark? Melanie intercepts swiftly, turning Mark's plea into further evidence of his recklessness. Jenna, if given a chance, would you be willing to reconcile, considering the years you've shared? The judge's question hangs heavy in the air. Your Honor, I believe in taking responsibility for our actions. The trust has been broken beyond repair here, and while I wish things could have been different, I must think about the future and well-being of my daughter. My reply is firm, closing any doors for Mark's last-minute appeals. As we step out of the courtroom for a brief recess, Melanie leans in, whispering, You were fantastic in there. He's losing ground, and the judge can see right through his tactics. Thanks, Mel. It's hard, but hearing you lay out everything so clearly, it's empowering. I feel like I can finally breathe, knowing Lily and I are going to come out of this okay. The burden of months seems lighter now, the end in sight. When the session resumes, the judge addresses the court with a tone of finality. Based on the evidence presented and the testimonies heard, it is clear that there has been a significant breach of trust and financial misconduct on part of the husband, Mark. I am inclined to rule in favor of Jenna, ensuring that the financial stability and future of their daughter, Lily, are prioritized. Mark's face pales, the reality of the situation settling in. No more tricks, no more diversions. As the gavel strikes, a sound not just of closure, but of a new beginning, echoes through the courtroom. As the judge ruled in our favor, I felt a wave of relief wash over me. For the first time in months, I can look forward to the future with hope. That's wonderful, Jenna. I knew the judge would see the truth. How are you planning to celebrate? Her voice is full of genuine happiness for us. I think a little celebration is in order. Lily and I could use some fun after all this stress. Later that day, Lily and I head to our favorite cafe, a small but cozy place where we've celebrated many of her milestones. Mom, I'm so proud of you. You fought for us, and you won. Lily's eyes sparkle with pride and relief. And I couldn't have done it without you, honey. Your support gave me the strength I needed. This victory is as much yours as it is mine. Our shared smiles reflecting our newfound freedom. The cafe buzzes with our friends and neighbors who have come to support us. Their congratulations and warm embraces fill the room with an energy that's both exhilarating and healing. You've become quite the local hero, Jenna. Standing up like that, you've shown a lot of courage, one of the neighbors comments, a friendly nod acknowledging my journey. It wasn't just for me. It's for any parent fighting for their child's future. If my story can inspire even one person to stand up for what's right, then it's all been worth it. My words stir nods of approval around us. As the evening winds down, Lily and I walk home under the stars, the crisp night air seeming to promise new beginnings. Mom, what's next for us? Lily asks, her voice tinged with excitement and curiosity. Well, we start rebuilding. We make sure your college fund is untouchable, and we plan for a future that's filled with possibilities. And maybe, just maybe, I might start my own design firm. What do you think? The idea has been simmering in my mind, and saying it out loud makes it feel possible. That sounds amazing, Mom. You'd be awesome at running your own business. Lily's enthusiasm is contagious, and for the first time in a long while, I feel truly inspired. Let's do it then. It's a new chapter for us, and I want us to write it together. My declaration sets the course for our new life, one where fear and manipulation have no place. Back at home, I update my resume and portfolio, ready to take the first steps towards independence. The community support has been overwhelming, and several local businesses have already expressed interest in collaborating once I launch my firm. As Lily and I sit down to sketch out plans for the future, the sense of possibilities fills the room. We're not just surviving, we're thriving, and every challenge we've faced is now a foundation for something greater. And to think, it all started with standing up for what's right, I murmur, more to myself than to Lily. But she catches it and nods, her smile as bright as the future we're building together. That wraps up Jenna's journey of resilience and empowerment. 
How do you think financial infidelity should be handled in relationships? Is transparency about finances as crucial as trust and communication? Or is there room for privacy? Feel free to share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this story and want to hear more, please like this video and subscribe to the channel for more thought-provoking content. Your support helps us bring more stories like Jenna's to light.